Hey, and welcome to episode four of my podcast. Um, this is actually take two. I already recorded the entire episode, um, and I'm working with new equipment, and apparently I don't know how to use that new <laughs> equipment. <laughs> So I like went to edit, I uploaded all the video files, went to edit, and there was no sound, none at all, because I'm using a video. I ordered like this fancy video microphone and I didn't plug it in right. Like literally I had one job. I had to take the little jack thing and I had to stick it in the microphone and I didn't stick it in far enough. That's what she said. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm doing this again. This is take two. Well, there's a little fuzz. Uh, this is take two of the video podcast, and hopefully I learned some things from the first time I filmed it, and this one will be even better, looking on the bright side. Maybe. I don't know. Um, also, for the first one, I like did my hair and I had my contacts, and I never wear my contacts, except when I'm filming this, because they are two years old, and because I never wear them, I haven't ordered new ones, so I just keep sticking in these, like, two-year-old contacts, and they're horrible, and they make my eyes burn, probably because you're not supposed to put in two-year-old contacts, like, onto your eyeball, but anyway, so when I was done, I, like, put my hair up and, like, took the contacts out, and I didn't feel like doing all that again, so ponytail again and glasses. Um, which I always worry that there's like a glare from the lights, but I'm looking on my new fancy camera and I don't see any glare. So we're just going to go with this. There is so much to talk about this week. Um, like I said earlier, I got a bunch of new equipment. I haven't filmed a podcast in a couple of weeks and that's why I ordered a lot of new equipment so that I could film better podcasts, better tutorials. And so I was kind of waiting for it all to come in and now it has clearly I need to practice using it a little bit more, but, um, I will talk about that a little bit later because a lot of you were asking like what kind of stuff I got. So I'll talk about what I got, how I'm using it, and I'll link everything in the description to this video. I also want to go over a bunch of great knitting mail that's come in, some yarn, some notions, um, lots of different things like that. And I've got a stack of books over here. Um, this is so funny. I've done, this is my fourth episode. The previous three episodes, I literally had a stack of books to talk about and then I would forget to talk about them. And a couple of you mentioned that. You were like, I see these books in the background. Like, will you talk about your books? <laughs> I mean to, I just forget, but I'm going to remember this time. I'm gonna remember to talk about the books. And so I'm gonna talk about that. I'm gonna talk about some socks. I have been knitting so many socks. I can't really show you the socks that I've been knitting, um, but I can show you a couple of socks and I can show you the next pattern that I'm working on at least. So there's that. And then I'm going to talk about knitting notions too. I've got a dating story and I've got another dad story. So a lot to, a lot to talk about. Um, the first thing I want to start with is actually the knitting notions. Um, there is this guy, his name's Caleb, and he has a podcast called Drowning in Yarn. You can also find him on Instagram under that same name. I'll put a link to that in my profile. And he, one of his podcasts, he talked about his sock go bag. And it's so great. He has this little bag that he keeps all of his like tools that he needs for knitting socks in the cute little bag. That way, whenever he goes to the park or if he's, you know, just going out anywhere, he's got all of his tools to go. Um, I do not have a sock go bag because unlike Caleb, I am not this like young, handsome person just going out and doing stuff. I'm old and I have a giant dent in my couch from my butt because I sit in it so much. <laughs> it's, it's huge. Like the dent is insane. Like it just keeps getting deeper and deeper because my butt just is in that dent like 12 hours a day. And what's so funny is like no one in my family, they all know not to sit in my spot, except for my dog Beasley. Beasley fights me for my spot constantly. As soon as I get up, if I get up to go like get a snack or whatever, Beasley is like, she comes from nowhere. And so quick, she's in my butt dent, just like in a bowl basically. And I have to move her. Anyways, all this to say, I don't have a sock go bag. I have a sock stay tin because unlike Caleb, I'm not like young and going out and doing things. I'm just sitting in my, my sad little couch butt dent <laughs> like socks. So this is my, um, this is my little sock tin and it's where I keep all of my sock knitting notions. So I thought I'd show you some of the different stuff that I use all the time, just like Caleb did when I'm knitting socks. So, um, anyways, I've got two 
two pairs of scissors, um, this little cheap plastic pair, and then this more refined, fancy pair of gold embroidery snips. The reason I have two pair is because kids are always coming in and grabbing scissors out of my tin and running off with them, and so I always need to have a backup um, until I can find the pair that they absconded with. Um, hair ties, a must. Um, various jewelry, like I, <laughs> like I, I guess I wear rings, take them off, throw them in the tin. Um, this is a mystery. Like I, it's a bent paper clip and I'm sure I use this to like poke something, but I don't know what. And for whatever reason, I thought I would need it again in the future. So it's been in the tin for like months now. Haven't needed it. I don't know what I needed it for to begin with. So, but it's there in case. Um, and then this is funny. So I, I have all of these tapestry needles. I bought this whole little container of them. I've literally never used this at all. I've never used any of the needles in here because this, this is my favorite tapestry needle. I use it all the time and it's the only one that I ever want to use. And so I don't know why I have this whole, whole little tin. Never use it, just use this one. So that's my little tapestry needle. Um, I've got some cable needles in here, but like I never use these because they're too big for socks. Like even this little one, this is a size three. And I'm typically knitting socks on a US size one needle. So even this is too thick. I always use a spare double pointed needle whenever I knit cables. Um, incidentally, I have a tutorial video for how to knit cables if you've never done it and you wanna learn to knit cables. Um, I've got a tutorial video on my channel and I'll put a link to that in the description of this video in case you wanna learn how to knit cables um, because they're so, they're so cute. Look at these little cables. Um, this is from my little black sock pattern, which I released on fr last Friday. Yeah, like a week ago. Um, and it's a cabled sock pattern. And it's got like three different variations in the pattern of socks you can knit. Um, you can do four thought heel, heel flap and gusset, or a shorty sock. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's that. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video as well. But that's what I use the double pointed needle for, just a spare one to knit cables because cable needles are just too thick. I don't even know why they're still in my little tin, but they are. Another hair tie. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. That's what I keep in there. Really the needles, the tapestry needle, um, the um, scissors, those are the most important, important things. And then this guy, whatever that is, I'm sure one day I'll need it. So it's gonna stay in there. Um, but anyways, I thought that was kind of fun that Caleb showed his sock go bag because he goes places and I don't know what that's like. I don't go anywhere. I just stay in my couch butt dent and knit socks and that's what I do. Um, as far as notions go, I did get some good stitch markers in the mail recently. I have never been a fancy stitch marker person. Like I always just use like these, like the cocoa knits, these, these little stitch markers, um, the really small ones. These are teeny tiny, so I don't know if you can see that. Uh, autofocus isn't wanting to focus automatically. But anyways, little tiny, little tiny stitch markers. I use those for knitting socks all the time. That's in my sock tin as well. But lately I've been getting into the fancy stitch market, um, stitch marker market, <laughs> because there's some really beautiful stuff out there. Like makers are really making some beautiful things that are sort of irresistible. So Holly Banks Lane sent me these stitch markers to try out. And these are mother of pearl. And they're so fancy and so exquisite. And they're just so well made. She even has like her maker's mark on the back. And mm, they're just so beautiful. I've already busted these out and started using these on a pair of socks. Um, I will link those in the description of the video. And then you cannot buy these. I'm really sorry. I'm going to show you these, but you can't buy them. These are from Hello Lavender. I will link her in the description as well. I highly suggest you follow her on Instagram. She posts awesome pictures, beautiful, beautiful photography. And then her posts are just really uplifting. And then she'll post real posts about struggles and just things that we all kind of experience. So I really, really love her Instagram. It's so valuable. She always just gives great content that can be so helpful. So I love following her just for her content alone, but especially for the things that she makes. She makes beautiful handcrafted stitch markers, earrings, and a lot of times she'll do collections, like where she'll do a themed kind of set. And this little collection that I have is one of those sets. This was a collaboration she did with Sorella Yarn. And Sorella did yarn dyed based on Hocus Pocus and Hello Lavender did Hocus Pocus stitch markers. And this was a pre-order. 
it closed within like 30 minutes of going up. I mean, they sold out so fast and I was so lucky to get my hands on some because these are the best things ever. Oh, look at that. It's the Sanderson sisters. It's Thackeray Bings. It's Salem and Autumn. It's the eye from the book. It's, I mean, it's so perfect. I absolutely love these. These are like a treasure and I just love to look at them. I haven't used them yet. They're still like on the cardboard because I can't bring myself to take them off. I just open the box and look at them because they're just so great. So anyways, I will link Hello Lavender um, in the description to this video so you can check her out. Now, as far as yarn mail, good, good stuff has come in. This is a sock set from Porter Wool Company. She's a new dyer. Her shop, her first shop update was Saturday today. I'm filming this on Saturday, but I'm not gonna post it till Sunday. So um, I guess technically I should say in the video, her shop update was yesterday, Saturday, October 10th. Um, but she might still have some stuff available if you wanna go check her out. This particular sock set is BFF and Raw Honey, and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's on tweed. I love it so, 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 so much. So you've definitely got to check out Porter Wool Company. She's fantastic, and she's a newer dyer, and yeah, her yarn is just absolutely gorgeous. I absolutely love it. I'm very, very excited to work with this sock set. Um, Another special thing, this is new stuff to me. I love marled yarn and typically I've made my own marl by just knitting two different, you know, yarns together. A little bit harder to do with socks unless you're wanting to knit really chunky socks. So I was really excited to find marled sock yarn. This is from Leo and Roxy. They are a Canadian company. Awesome. And this is a black and white marled yarn and I'm super excited. It's fingering weight, so I'm really excited to use it. This is just called Marled Sock. It doesn't have like, an, uh, what's funny is it says on the back 100% good vibes and I thought that that was like the name of the yarn. It's not, it's just called Marled Sock. So anyways, excited to try that. Another Marled yarn I came across. This is Loop Fiber Company and this is the Yin Yang Sock and it's basically, she calls it an inverted colorway. And so this is like a really pretty blue and natural. This particular color is Win. And then this one is called Makeup, and it's the same thing. It's the Yin Yang Inverted Colorway Yarn, and it's marled. Fingering weight, so excited to see what this looks like when I knit it up into a sock. It's going to be awesome. So I will definitely link all of those yarn companies um, in the description of this video, along with the stitch marker sets that I got as well, because you're definitely gonna wanna check those out. They're so, so cute, especially this Holly Banks Lane. You can actually buy these. Um, She's got beautiful, beautiful stitch markers in her shop and they all are just so modern and delicate and they have such a beautiful timeless appeal to them and I'm just so excited. I love it. I've already used these um, in my knitting. So let's talk about knitting. I mentioned earlier I cannot totally share with you the socks and patterns that I've been writing up lately, but I can share this one. Um, I think you've seen this on Instagram a few times and I talked about it in a previous podcast. This is going to be a pattern. This is color work and stripes. Um, and this is going to be great if you've never knit color work before because this is just about the easiest color work pattern there is. This is called the lice stitch, which is the most unfortunate name. And I don't know if you have kids, if your kids have ever gotten lice, mine have. And it's absolutely horrible. And you think it won't happen to you. You think there's no way my kids could ever get lice. We're clean people. Our house is clean. Lice is not going to happen to us, but it does. It sneaks up on you. It happens. They get it at school and then they come home and you don't know they have lice for a couple of days. And then you notice they're scratching their little heads and you think, could that be lice? Surely not. Then you get out of comb and you go to look and yeah, it's lice and it is absolutely a hellscape. Like I can't even begin to describe, I still remember the misery of trying to get rid of lice. Memphis, my son, has like super thick, thick long hair like I do and getting lice out of his hair proved to be impossible. Like we tried to kill it and kill it and it just didn't work and I ended up having to shave his head and my daughter Sailor had it and we had, I mean, oh God, you have to like put stuff in trash bags to suffocate them. You have to like disinfect and clean and then disinfect and clean again. It's like never ending. It is almost impossible to get rid. You just want to set fire to your house and burn it down and start over. Like it's that bad. Um, so anyways, if you have young kids and they eventually get to go back to school, 
it happens whether you expect it or not even if you think it won't happen to you so anyway it's not a huge fan of the fact that this is called a lice stitch but nonetheless it is um but it's a really fun stitch to make it's really easy if you've never done color work um, so with the pattern, I will be doing a color work tutorial to teach you how to do it. And it's so, so simple and you're going to love it. And then you'll be able to tackle all kinds of color work projects, whether on socks or in sweaters. Um, I'm knitting it on these Addy Easy socks, um, which sounds like an infomercial, the Addy Easy socks, but <laughs> that's what they're called. So anyways, these are really tiny circular needles and one needle is longer than the other needle and that makes it a little bit easier to handle them like I don't know if you're like me um circular needles hurt my hands like the tiny ones like this so I usually do magic loop but with color work it is so much easier to do color work on socks on a tiny circular and the Addy Easy socks have actually made it pretty easy for me to do it without my hands hurting so I will post a link to these in the description of this video if you have had trouble knitting on tiny circulars, I definitely recommend giving these a try. These are 10 inch and that one needle being longer than the other really does help. Um, so with these particular socks, what I do is I cast on the cuff and do the cuff in magic loop. I do the whole body with the color work in the Addy Easy sock and then I go back to magic loop for the stripes on the foot. Um, so yeah, I'll be talking about that in the tutorial that releases with the pattern when the pattern comes out. So I'm working really hard on the second sock. Um, getting the pattern all written up and polished. So that'll be coming soon um, because color work socks, especially like around the holidays are so great. Um, so yeah, already talked about the little black socks that came out last week, cables, all of that, knitting notions. Um, now I wanna talk about books. Um, again, like I mentioned, I always have like a stack of books and people always notice it behind me um, in my videos and then I forget to talk about them. So I'm going to talk about books now. Um, this is one that's new in my stack. This is Conjure Women and it takes place like a little bit before and then after the Civil War and it kind of spans generations and I haven't read it yet but I'm super excited to because I love historical fiction and I'm going to link all these books I talk about in the description of this video so if you want to check any of them out they're all going to be down there. This one actually just came in the mail the other day and it's Anna Kay and it is a take on Anna Karenina. So it's like a retelling in modern times of that particular story. And I love retellings like so much. I love when people take um, an existing classic story and then retell it in modern times and kind of give it a modern spin. This one I haven't read and I know it's about the daughter of a horror filmmaker and something horror, horrorful horrifying, Hor <laughs> horrorful, just making up words now, something horrifying happens to her in the book. So it's a good book for October, Harrow Lake. Um, haven't read it yet, excited to. I haven't read any of these books yet, to be honest. Like I spend most of my time working and knitting socks. I don't have that much time to read anymore. So these are all just in a basket under my coffee table waiting for me. Like calling out to me and I haven't had a chance to read them. This one I'm really excited about. This is called Beheld and it's about the first murder in the Plymouth colony. So it has like so many things I love, like Puritans, huge fan of reading books about fanatical religious groups, like especially historical ones. Like I think that's so fascinating. Um, so very excited about that. And then Mexican Gothic. I was saving this for October. And again, I just don't have time to read anymore, but this one looks so, so good. Um, apparently it's kind of similar to Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, which if you haven't read Rebecca, turn off the YouTube, run to your nearest bookstore or library or Amazon, wherever, and read Rebecca. It is one of my favorite scary books of all time. And Netflix has made a movie about it. Like they've done a movie version of the book and it's coming out October 20th or 21st, I think. I don't know but I'm super excited about it because I love that story so, so much. It is absolutely the best story. Um, so scary. Has one of the best opening lines in any book I've ever read. So that's why I'm excited about Mexican Gothic because it's being compared to that as like on that level of spooky scary. So I'm very excited about all of these books. If I ever, ever get a chance to read them, hopefully I will soon, but I don't know. I mean, I spend so much time. I basically knit and work on like patterns and design work. I mean, from the minute I get up until I go to bed and sprinkled in there, there's 
cleaning the house and homeschooling my kids and all of that stuff. And we're renovating our house right now, which thankfully David does most of that work because I want nothing to do with it. Like right now he's caulking bookshelves and crown molding and beadboard and it's awful. And I mean, if you've ever caulked anything, it's, I mean, it's, it's so boring. <laughs> just talking about caulking is boring. Like, oh God, I mean, it's just squirting the stuff out and then, oh, it's horrible. So he's doing all of that. And I mean, it's, it's a lot. And then, yeah, so it's, I knit and work most of the time. Anytime I'm not like working with my kids on homeschooling or cleaning, giving dogs baths, whatever, it's knitting, it's design work. So I don't get a lot of time to read um, and I really miss it because reading is such a big part of who I am. It always has been. I've loved to read ever since I was a kid. Um, I was a very shy, introverted kid. So having a book with you all the time is great because anytime you're in a crowd of people, you can just <laughs> like hide behind the book. Except for those total jerkwads who like interrupt you when you're reading. Like, what is that about? Like you're reading a book and someone just starts talking to you. You know, what's that about? Looks like a good book. What's it called? It's like, oh God, read the cover. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to talk to you about this. I just want to read the book. Those people are the worst, the actual worst. If you're one of those people, you're the worst. Just so you know, <laughs> don't talk to people while they're reading. Um, Anyways, I guess I'm going to talk to you now about this whole new setup. If you've noticed, I've got a new fancy background behind me. I moved my whole setup upstairs to my bedroom. So all of my podcasts and all of my tutorial videos prior to this, I've been filming downstairs in my kitchen at my kitchen table. That has been awful for a number of <laughs> reasons. Kids coming in and out, dogs barking, dogs scratching at the door. My husband works from home now. Um, his company went permanently remote after COVID. So he works in the dining room, what used to be our dining room and is now his home office. Um, and so he'd be on conference calls or uh, he would get a call while I was filming and it was just horrible. I did not have very good lights. It was just kind of like, ah, use what I have, you know, to start this video thing. I didn't really want to invest in good equipment until I knew if I was actually going to like this and gonna want to do it. So um, I've really enjoyed filming tutorials. I'm actually starting to really enjoy the podcast. So I went ahead, invested in a new camera, whole new lights, um, a microphone, as mentioned earlier, that I did not know how to work <laughs> for my camera. Um, a fancy tripod so I can film overhead tutorials, flat lay tutorials, all of that. So um, all of that stuff trickled in and came in and now I've got it all set up, working out the kinks, figuring out how to use it. And I created this whole like photography video studio in my bedroom. So my bedroom looks really crappy now <laughs> because most of it is like, I have all the lights set up all the time because it's such a pain in the ass to like, put lights up and take them down. And so I created this space where I could just have the lights set up all the time. So that way when I need to film, I can just run up here and do it. Just turn the lights on, turn the camera on and go. Um, so I'm going to link all of the stuff I bought because a couple of you on Instagram were asking about the different, you know, materials and tools that I bought to do this. So I will link everything in the description to this video. I did invest in a really nice camera. Um, I used to, in a previous life, work as a professional photographer in the corporate headquarters of a national craft chain. So um, photography is something that I've done for years and years and years, um, working with DSLRs. And so I wanted to invest in a pretty nice camera that could not only record video, but that would also be good for still shots, for still photography of my socks and different things. I've been using my phone up until now because it's just easy. But you know, I'm gonna take it to the next level, I think. So um, I decided to get a little fancier with my photography and actually use a DSLR. So that's what I'm doing. So I will link the camera I bought, which is a Canon 90D, really good for filming video. If that's something that you wanna do a lot of, whether for your own podcast or for tutorials, whatever, you might wanna record video for, it's really good for that. But I'm also gonna link a more budget-friendly DSLR. That way, if you're just wanting a camera that you can use to take photos of your finished projects or your products, if you sell notions, if you sell yarn, whatever, um, this particular camera would be really good for that. You really don't need a super heavy-duty expensive 
expensive camera. That's one thing camera companies are really good at trying to sell you on buying like these extremely expensive DSLRs and you really don't need that. If you're shooting advertisements that are going to end up on a billboard, yeah, you need a pretty big camera with a huge sensor in order to do that. If you're shooting wildlife in Alaska or someplace with crazy extreme temperatures, where you're gonna be hiking over giant cliffs and rocks and you might drop it, you need a really expensive camera in case you drop it and a camera that can handle those temperatures. Everything else, you can get away with a very basic, inexpensive DSLR. It's all in the lens. Um, I'll link that too. And I'm gonna be doing some tutorials on photography as well for photographing your finished projects or your products and things like that. So I will have video tutorials for that, kind of showing you how I use a DSLR what kind of lenses are really good for that kind of photography. Um, but for now, I'll just tell you, I bought a Sigma 1750, 17250 um, zoom lens. That way I can kind of go wide for these video tutorials. Um, so I will link that as well. It's a really good lens for filming video. And then it's also a great lens for taking still shots. So again, I needed double duty. I needed a camera and lens that would serve me well for both purposes. I bought a Rode microphone, which again, <laughs> I struggled with in the beginning and didn't quite know how to work but now I think I've got it figured out so it attaches to the top of my camera and hopefully it's gonna give me a little bit better sound for my tutorials and my podcast and then I've got a bunch of great lights um, I bought a three light kit um, and I will link that in the description as well I'm really happy with it so far it's two medium-sized soft boxes plus an overhead boom light soft box Great for filming flat lay tutorials, great for filming videos, gives me enough power, enough light so that you can see my face and it's not all like dark. Um, so anyways, and then I set up a fancy background. I've got like my little shelf with my yarn and all my knitting books and yeah, so I can just run up here and do stuff now. It's a lot easier. My bedroom looks horrible. My bed is like shoved in the corner. I had to take my bed apart because it wouldn't fit. <laughs> with all this stuff. So right now I have a mattress on the floor. And after Dave gets done remodeling the dining room, what is now his office, um, he's gonna build a platform for our bed to at least get it off the floor. But that's where we're at right now. When you live in a small house, man, rooms have to do double duty and that's what's going on here for sure. Um, so yeah, so I've got, I've got a bedroom that looks terrible, but this little corner, this little knitting studio where I can film tutorials and podcasts looks really cute and I'm really happy with it. And I know that like Bobby from Queer Eye says that like your bedroom needs to be this peaceful, relaxing place and it shouldn't just be a mattress on the floor. <laughs> But Bobby probably doesn't live in like a 1400 square foot house with, you know, a bunch of kids and dogs and stuff. He probably has like a really spacious, you know, place where he has like rooms dedicated to whatever, you know, he doesn't have to like turn a room into five different purposes like I do. So, um, anyways, it is what it is. It works. You have to do what works for you. And this is what works for me right now. So anyways, that's my new setup. Super happy with it so far. Um, now I'm going to tell you my dating story. We've talked about the yarn that came in and the needles and the socks such as there were. I know there weren't a lot of socks to show you this podcast. And we finally talked about books. I can't believe I actually remembered. Um, so now let's move on to dating stories. And I think I mentioned in my last podcast, like I was a shy introverted person. So I didn't date a ton. Like I wasn't like one of those people that's just like dating some new guy every week. I mean, I was super shy. So I didn't date a lot. Again, the ones I dated though, super weird <laughs> until I met David. And then David's my husband. We met when we were 19, got married at 21. And when I met him, it was just like, be upset, be. When I met him, it was just like BFFs right away. Like he was awesome and not, not weird at all. I mean, like a little, but like in a good way. Um, but the dating story I'm going to tell is actually about David. Um, <laughs> he's, he hates that I bring this up all the time, but at the same time, how can I not? Like it's, oh my gosh, it's like the worst. It's not the worst date I've ever been on because he was there and he's so great. So any evening with David's a good evening, but it's one of the more bizarre evenings of my life for sure. And not something I expected that I would ever be taking part in. Um, 
we were 19. We had been dating like maybe a month or two. And I think he really wanted to pull out all the stops and like impress me. So he planned this surprise evening. He bought tickets to an event, did not tell me what the event was, picked me up, took me to the event, and, and then I was surprised by what we were gonna be doing. Um, it was at Rose State Community College, which is in Oklahoma City, in their performing arts theater. And it was a Pink Floyd laser light show. Um, <laughs> like, I don't even know if I can explain what that, I mean, maybe you've been to one. Maybe you went to one deliberately and you thought it was amazing. I did not. It was genuinely one of the most horrible things I've ever been subjected to in my entire life. First of all, I don't even like Pink Floyd that much. Like, they've got a few good songs. Wish You Were Here, fantastic. Um, a few good songs, but I'm not one of those people that can sit down and listen to a Pink Floyd album from beginning to end, much less two Pink Floyd albums <laughs> in one sitting. I just don't think they're that great. Like, they're okay. Don't come at me if you love Pink Floyd. It's a personal preference thing, and I'm just not a huge Pink Floyd person. But my husband is, and it's really sweet actually because his dad really loves Pink Floyd. And like one of his earliest memories was he bought his dad a Pink Floyd record for Christmas and he'd never heard it before. So his dad opened it and was super excited and put it on the record player. And that was the first time that David had ever heard them. And he was like 11 at the time. And he just remembers being awestruck by the music and just totally loving it. And it was just a bonding thing with his dad. So I get why he loves Pink Floyd. Um, I just don't. <laughs> but anyway, the laser light show added to it. Oh my gosh. So you have head splitting volume levels on the Pink Floyd, first of all. It was like an aggressive assault of noise. And I love concerts. I've been to concerts. I'm fine with noise, but this was like way too much. I had a splitting headache within five minutes. It was so loud. On top of that, you have the laser light show and it's just exactly like what it sounds. Laser lights just all over the place. And these inflatable creatures that were like blowing with a wind machine and Oh, it was like way too much. It was like sensory overload. It was horrible, absolutely horrible. And I was just dying and I could not wait for it to end. And David was like sitting next to me just in heaven thinking it was the greatest thing ever and probably like so proud of himself. Like, this is the best date. I mean, who wouldn't love a Pink Floyd laser light show? I did not, it was awful. It was so awful. And after it was over, he was like, what'd you think? And I was like, what can I say? That was, was great. Um, it was not. And a, a couple of months later, like once I'd gotten more comfortable with him, you know, I told him how much I hated it. Because you know, like when you first start dating someone, you want them to think that you're a good person. So you don't like, you don't, you don't, you're not honest about stuff totally. And so I totally lied and was like, oh, it was great. I loved it. Pink Floyd. They're amazing. You know, oh, worst. And so to this day, I like bring that up. Like if he talks about, you know, hey, I'm, I've got, you know, a little plan for a date night on Friday. I'm like, it's not a laser light show, is it? <laughs> and he's like, you've got to shut up. You've got to stop talking about that. But I think he thinks it's funny too. It's all in good fun. Um, and he's talked about before, like surprising me with another one just to see what I would do. Like if he took me like to another laser light show. But anyways, um, yeah, that was a terrible date, but at the same time, it was awesome because like, like I said, any, any date with David was great um, from the moment I met him. So that's my dating story. Now it's time for my dad's story. Um, I mentioned last week that my dad has a favorite word and I said in my next podcast, I'd tell you what it is. I have consulted with my dad. <laughs> first of all, there's disagreement. He does not think this is his favorite word. I disagree. He says it a lot. So obviously it's like up there, at least it's one of his favorite words, but he said it is not his favorite word. And he also said, and I quote, if I talked about it on YouTube, he would not be proud of me. So <laughs> and he was like really serious. There was not a smile in his voice. It was definitely like his serious dad voice. And let me tell you, I am 39. And I have spent decades trying to get my dad to be proud of me. And I think it's like, I think it's only in the last year or so that he actually has been. 
my dad's a tough nut to crack. He is not proud of you for nothing. Like he, you have to work hard to earn my dad's pride and approval. And it is literally taking me like 30 some odd years to get it. So I'm not gonna blow it now. So I'm not gonna say the word, even though I totally disagree and think it is his favorite word. He says it's not. And he said he wouldn't be proud of me if I said it. So I'm sorry, I can't share the word because I don't want my dad to not be proud of me. <laughs> But I am gonna tell you a dad's story. Um, my mom has been texting them to me because she thinks this is hilarious. I, again, jury's still out if my dad was serious when he said to stop talking about him or not. I'm gonna risk that because you, like, you guys just need to experience my dad. Um, oh, little hiccup there. Um, so this particular story happened when I was a really little kid and we lived in a town called Shoto, Oklahoma, which is super rural, a lot of trees, it's like wooded. Um, and our house was like in kind of a wooded lot and there were all these tree stumps like all over the lot. And my dad, it just bugged him, all these tree stumps. Like, it's not like we were gonna farm this land. It's not like we needed to clear a section of land for crops or something. It just bugged him that the tree stumps were there. So he would spend his weekends digging them out and then he would burn them in the driveway. <laughs> I don't know what you do with tree stumps where you live, but apparently in Oklahoma, we get rid of them, whether we're gonna use the land or not, and we set fire to them in our driveways. And that's what my dad did. So we had a good blaze going with the tree stumps. <laughs> and he decided he needed to leave to go get something. So he gets in his truck and he backs out of the driveway, forgets that there is a flaming pile of tree stumps in his way and just drives right on top of it. So as he's backing up, of course my mom and my brother are like screaming and like waving their arms like, stop, you've got to stop the fire. And so he did stop right on top of the fire, rolls his window down and he's like, what? <laughs> You're driving on the fire. You're on the fire. And he's like, what are you talking about? And they're like, the fire, the tree stumps. And then it like the light bulb goes on and he's like, oh my God. So he like tries to reverse, tries to get off the tree stumps and he gets caught. Like the tree stumps are totally wedged up under his truck at this point and they're still on fire. He could explode at any minute. <laughs> Anyways, he did not explode. He finally got the truck off the fire, drug out the flaming tree stumps, got a hose and like put the fire out. But I mean, this could have been a really tragic, he's really lucky. Like I could be telling you an extremely tragic story <laughs> about how my dad died trying to burn tree stumps because he drove over the stumps and his truck exploded. Um, so yeah, he's super lucky. In that particular incident um that didn't happen but uh yeah that's my good dad story for this week and hopefully i won't get in trouble for telling it but he has to get mad at my mom because she's the one who reminded me about it she texted it to me she was like i've got another good dad story um my mom oh my gosh my mom is the absolute cutest like i love her so much and i haven't told any stories about her because like i don't want to do that to her and it's not that i don't love my dad but he's just so fun to mess with that like i have to like i, I just go ahead and tell the stories anyways because it's just so fun to like mess with him but my mom i've got some good mom stories too like she is so funny because she is the sweetest and she does not swear. Like I've heard her drop a few swear words, like the little ones, nothing serious. She doesn't, she doesn't go for the heavy hitters. Um, no F bombs, none of that. She just drops some minor ones occasionally. But for most of my life, she's just not been someone who swears a lot. My dad, on the other hand, all day, every day. Like we used to joke that I thought my first name was damn it. And my middle name was summer <laughs> because I heard, damn it, Summer, like eight times a day. Um, so my dad drops them all, except for the F-bomb. He's not a huge F-bomber either, but all the other ones he hits with regularity. My mom, not so much. And one time when I was an adult living on my own, she called me on the phone and she was like, Summer. <laughs> she was like, I just thought the F word. Like she was calling me to tell me that she thought the F word. Not that she said it, that she thought it. And she was like, I was in the driveway at KFC. <laughs> Kentucky Fried Chicken. I was in the driveway at KFC and I just thought, man, I'm effing hungry. I want some effing KFC. <laughs> Except I didn't think effing. I thought the actual F word. And so <laughs> she was like, 
calling to tell on herself to like confess that she had thought the F word, not said it, thought it. So that's who my mom is. She's just like, oh, she's hilarious in her own way. Like, absolutely. Um, so you got a bonus mom story with this podcast episode. Um, and yeah, I want to know, do any of you have parents who don't swear, but occasionally they think swear words and then tell on themselves and call to let you know that they thought a swear word? Um, because man, my mom sure did. And I will remember that for the rest of my life. I mean, I think that happened when I was like 22. So I can't do math. It was like a long time ago. <laughs> it was before I had kids. So it was like a really long time ago and I'll never forget it. Um, so yeah, those are my mom's stories, my dad's stories, my dating stories. Sorry, I can't share the word with you. Um, and it's, I feel terrible because last week I said I would, but again, don't want to risk losing the what little bit of pride that I have that my dad <laughs> has in me. I'm not gonna get rid of that. Um, shared all the yarn. Again, I will link all of this good stuff. The Porter Wool sock set. Again, her first shop update was Saturday, October 10th. There might be some stuff left in her shop. Leo and Roxy from Canada, the good marled stuff. And then Loop Fiber Co. also marled, um, not from Canada. Um, but yeah, I'll link all that in the description to this video. Uh, my new pattern that came out last week, the Little Black Socks cables. I've got a video tutorial on my YouTube channel for cable knitting if you don't know how to knit cables. And I will also link this pattern if that's something you want to give a try. And then the new pattern, working up. This will be coming out soon, and I'm working on writing it now, getting it all set up, and um, I will film a tutorial video for knitting color work. It's a lot easier than you think. It's a lot of fun, and it opens up so many possibilities with socks. Like, mm, you can do so many cool things with color work. It's like painting by numbers. Um, yeah, we talked about notions, the stitch markers. Um, I'm really sorry that you can't buy the Hocus Pocus stitch markers. I feel bad for showing them to you, but like, how can you not share them? They're absolutely amazing. So I will link Hello Lavender. You can keep an eye out when she has a new um, pre-order. She always comes up with cool collections, cool themed collections. Um, and she opens up the pre-orders on her website. You can get in and get you one of her amazing sets of stitch markers. And then of course, Holly Banks Lane, these little pearl guys. These are like stitch markers like Marie Antoinette would use if she were a knitter. I mean, they're just so amazing. Um, and then all the books. I will link all of these amazing books in the description of this video as well. Again, I hope I get to um, come back next week with another one. Stuff gets really busy between the homeschooling and the knitting and design work that it's hard to do like a podcast episode every week, but I'm going to try, especially now that I've got all this fancy new equipment and this little photography studio. So I will try to be back next week with another episode. Um, and let me know in the comments if there's specific things you want me to talk about or discuss, uh, because basically I just kind of fly by the seat of my pants and talk about what what's on my mind. So yeah, thanks for hanging out with me today and hopefully I'll see you next week with a new episode. Again, all the equipment that I'm using to film this, I will link in the description of this video and I will be filming tutorials soon for photography and videography. Um, if that's something that you're interested in and you want to kind of uh, up your game when it comes to photographing your finished objects, or if you want um, information on how I'm doing podcasts because you want to do a podcast as well, I will do video tutorials on all of that. I will link my Instagram, my Ravelry, my Etsy, all of that in the description. My favorite needles that I use, like the Addy Easy socks, plus my absolute favorite Chia Goo 40 inch US size one that I knit all my socks on. Um, I love spreading the love about those Chia Goos. I'm obsessed with them. So yeah, I will link those as well. You can find all kinds of good stuff in the description. So yeah, I guess I will see you guys next time.